The Panamera is a rare car in that it does everything so, so well that it's hard to find fault with it. First off, you look at the ergonomics in this car. From a visual perspective, it just simply works. Never am I hunting for my window switches or my climate controller to figure out how to use the nav. In fact, the car is so intuitive that literally I can just kind of move my hand to where I think the switch should be, and nine times out of 10, that's where it is. It's something that not a lot of manufacturers have mastered. One of the best parts about the Panamera GTS is simply the way that it drives. I mean, this is kind of a back to basics Porsche, if you will. It's front engine, and the way that it delivers the power is simply fantastic. I mean, you can just put it in the Sport or Sport Plus mode, leave it in drive, roll onto the power, and it's, it, it's great. It's linear, it feels good, and never once are you hunting for the correct gear because, let's face it, the engineers at Porsche have managed to figure out exactly what gear this car needs to be in. Now, can you shift it manually? Sure you can. I mean, you can pop it into manual mode, you can play with the paddles and, you know, run through the gears however you want and get some of the best sounds in all the motoring. Now, let us not forget that all this performance does not come cheap. I mean, race price on the Panamera GTS is around $113,000. That's quite a large number, as we all know. Add on the $30,000 plus dollars worth of options, and well, all of a sudden that price just climbs to close to 150 grand. That's a lot of money. Now, some of these options, I suppose you could forego if you simply don't care about music. You could get rid of the $7,000 Burmeister stereo or the $2,900 adaptive cruise control. These are options that, while you know nice to have, you don't need. In fact, you can get a base Panamera with a nice set of wheels, and then you have a car that you can go out and flog on the weekends with your buddies, or just drive around and show off with, which is one of the best parts about this car. It's, it's kind of addicting. I mean, literally, I mean, using the PDK, you would never think that it's something you would kind of want in a big sedan like this, but I find myself using it more than I ever thought I would. Then you start to explore the limits of the handling on this car, and the limits are just unbelievably high. The amount of grip, the balance, the way that the steering feels is all quintessential Porsche. It's one of the most confidence inspiring cars that I've driven in quite a long time and it's something that I would spend the money on and I don't say that about a lot of cars. I'm excited about this car. I feel like I belong in this car and as as a big guy I'm really comfortable. You know it's 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 rare that I get excited. I really really enjoy this car. I really like it. I could go on and on and on and on and gush and gush and gush about why you should go by the Panamera GTS. I don't have too many reasons as to why you shouldn't buy the Panamera GTS. I don't know, maybe you're mortgaged up to the hilt and you can't afford it. If that's the case, don't buy this car. If you don't have a garage that you can put this car in, and you must feel the urge to keep this outside, well, eh, don't buy this car. Um, if you want a tire smoking burnout machine, don't buy this car. This is not the one. However, if you want a car to go from point A to point B in a fashion that will make you smile from ear to ear, that'll make you comfortable, that'll cradle you in every creature comfort you could possibly have, and simply put a smile on your face, spend the money because it is that good.